mentioned, this is the webinar on endpoint assessment. It's the last in our series for the um, construction roadshow that we've done um, online this year. So um, today we're going to be um, coming. So looking first of all at the standards in which we are approved um, within construction that we can provide EPA services and also those that we've got in our planned pipeline to come in the near future. Um, we're then going to consider some of the key things to think about when planning your curriculum to help you prepare for a successful endpoint assessment. Um, and then we're going to cover um, what to do at Gateway and finally look at some of the key endpoint assessment methods that are used in the construction standards and the process as well. Um, and there will be opportunity, um, so as Catherine mentioned, if you want to um, ask any questions, um, we will be able to um, look at questions at the end as well. So first of all, then, to have a look um, at the standards. So um, we are on the register to provide EPA services for over 60 different standards um, across a wide range of different sectors. Um, and here we have listed those um, that we have within the um, construction um, sector. Obviously, construction is really a key sector um, for us in terms of um, for endpoint assessment because that complements our C skills offering of, and our qualifications um, and other products that we have within the sector. Um, we're actually already carrying out live um, endpoint assessments for many of the standards here. So, with your carpentry and joinery standards, we did start those. Um, just before the first lockdown um, and then since things have restarted going again we've been doing um, more of those we're now starting doing our first sort of bricklayer ones um, many of these others so property maintenance we've been doing for quite a while now um, and we're looking to be starting our first um, painter and decorator soon as well um, some of these um, newer ones at the bottom that we've got more recently approved for, um, so these are just on the register um, in the last um, few months, um, and we're now working on the support to go with these as well. Um, so on this list, we have those that are planned um, for this academic year. So this first list, are those um, that we are definitely going to be going for um, during um, this year that we will then um, be able to provide EPA services for. And then we have this second list that we've currently got under consideration. So for these, um, we're still considering um, and looking for what the demand is. So. If you're interested and would like to work with NACN on these standards and for us to provide EPA for your apprentices, um, can you let us know? Um, because um, if we have sufficient interest in demanding these standards, then we will be looking um, to go for those um, this academic year as well. Um, but we do just need some more information at this moment in time of the kinds of numbers that um, there might be for those standards. So do let us know um, if you're interested and what sort of numbers that you've got um, on program. Okay, so um, those are the standards um, that we have within the sector. Um, so now on to looking at planning your curriculum. So one of the key areas that's really important is that you're actually um, plan your curriculum in line with the apprenticeship standard itself and not just um, follow the um, original framework that was being delivered previously. And the endpoint assessment um, is designed so that it has to cover every aspect of the standard, um, regardless as to um, whether that pati any particular skill is um, used in their workplace. So it's important that they get the experience and they cover the full coverage of the standard. <clears throat> um, so your first point of call um, when you're doing your curriculum planning is to make sure that you've got a copy of the apprenticeship standard and the assessment plan. 
So um, this can be found on um, the Institute for Apprenticeships um, website. Um, and I've actually included the link here, and you will get a copy of the slides and the recording to be able to access this um, in order to um, get onto this page. And you can simply type in um, the name of the standard that you're looking for um, in order to, to access it. Now, it's really important that you ensure that you're working with the right version for your apprentices. Um, and if you're on the screen on, um, further down on this left hand side, there is actually a button where you can actually click to show previous versions. And when you click in the standards, it give you, gives you details of um, the timescales of when um, those assessment plans um, are uh, available for, for um, different apprentices. So, for example, with your level two carpentry and joinery, there are two versions that you've got the version 1.0, which is for apprentices that started their program prior to the 18th of September of this year. Um, and you have version 1.1, um, which is for apprentices that started from the 18th of September um, onwards of this year. And there's some really significant differences um, within, the, within those um, standards and assessment plans. So the original version includes completion of the qualifications, so that's a mandatory requirement if they started prior to um, 18th of September. But any apprentices that are started from 18th of September onwards no longer um, need to um, complete the qualification. It's no longer a mandatory requirement. So instead, those apprentices um, will need to complete an assessment portfolio, which gets submitted at Gateway. Um, and that would then be used to support a professional discussion. Um, whereas in the original version, there is no professional discussion in the carpentry and joinery. So I um, so can't stress how important it is just to make sure that you are working with the right versions of the um, assessment plans. Um, and you're, um, it's the same um, with um, Bricklayer, um, that's been updated as well, whereas that has um, the date um, has actually been backdated for, to include existing apprentices. Um, and the assessment plan now states um, that the practical is 12 hours rather than six. So do make sure that you're working with the correct versions for your apprentices. <clears throat> so when you click into a particular standard, then this is the screen that you get. This one is um, for Rufa. Um, so um, once you get into this screen, um, a bit further down on this, on the right hand side, you're able to um, download a copy of the standard as well as the assessment plan. Now, all endpoint assessment organisations, we're all working to that same assessment plan. So um, it, it's a really important document that you should all have a copy of. Um, and ensure um, that, that you're following. There isn't going to be any surprises. We're not assessing against anything different apart from what, what it states um, within the assessment plan. So it's also um, important to note um, the programme duration as well. Um, so for this one, it mentions about 24 months and it says this does not include the EPA period. So that means you're expecting 24 months on programme and then the EPA is after that. And when you look in the assessment plans, you normally have something there that says um, around um, three months um, for the EPA period. So again, it's really important that you include that um, in your planning um, and actually allow time for um, preparation for the endpoint assessment and practice and carrying out mocks. Um, and not try and um, rush, um, and you do have that involvement um, at the end of the programme still with those apprentices. It's not just a matter of getting them to gateway um, and then your involvement as a pro provider finishes. <clears throat> so the other important point with your planning is early engagement with your endpoint assessment organisation. 
So it's actually really beneficial for both us and for you um, if you engage with us early, um, because if you're in your hour plan pipeline, we can then ensure that we've got the right resources and assessors required um, to provide the EPA service at the time um, that you need it. Um, however, if we don't know about your apprentices until they get to Gateway, um, or maybe just before Gateway, um, then we might not be in an immediate position to be able to provide that EPA service um, in the timely manner, um, and that could um, cause a delay. <clears throat> um, so the first stage, and we um, I would suggest that this is done sort of right at the beginning of the programme, um, is that um, you enter into an EPA agreement um, with us, it sits separately from your approval um, as an award, um, if you're working with us as an awarding body. So um, you won't automatically get access to our guidance and support. You need to um, have that EPA agreement confirming us as the selected EPAO for those apprentices um, in order to access to our, um, our support package. So once that is in place, um, the first thing that will happen is that you'll get allocated an EPA manager um, and they will be a point of contact um, that will support you um, through the process. Um, you'll get access to um, additional guidance that we have around the endpoint assessment. So things like on program training guides, um, any additional grading information, um, information on if there are variances from the assessment plan, such as um, with the brick layer. Um, you'll also get um, information um, around sort of the practical um, and the setup and the arrangements as to how that's going to work. Because again, you don't want to get to gateway um, and then realise that you don't have the right facilities um, for assessments. So it's really important to think about the endpoint assessment at the beginning. Um, and make arrangements early. Um, we also um, provide regular um, webinars, events. Um, you can also have access to bespoke su um, support on the areas where you need it. And all that is offered um, at no um, additional cost. It's all within our um, EPA fees. Um, and it's also important um, that you ensure that you know what the processes and procedures are um, of when you need to book the endpoint assessment, how much notice you need to give, um, and understand what the gateway requirements are um, and, and the evidence that's going to be needed um, by the endpoint assessment organisation. So all of this that you can consider um, in the planning stages. Um, so this slide um, highlights some of the main benefits, um, particularly of working with NOCN as an endpoint assessment organisation. Um, I've pretty much sort of gone through these ones that are on um, the left hand side around access to the guidance and support. Um, in addition, we do have the setup for um, remote assessment technology. So um, we, our um, tests are done online. Um, and we're also um, able to um, invigilate um, assessments online, which obviously in the current climate with COVID, um, um, we've been doing that at no extra cost where we've actually done the remote invigilation um, for providers. Um, and that's the same with our functional skills tests as well. They're all online and we are able to offer um, remote invigilation um, in functional skills as well. Um, we're also able to use video technology um, for professional discussions um, as well. So being able to maximise the opportunity to carry out assessments remotely. Um, and others around our um, robust quality assurance um, processes that um, we have in place. Um, again, we work with multiple EQA organisations across the different standards and we've received really positive feedback. Um, and we've been doing large numbers of endpoint assessments now. So we have the systems um, in place um, to manage that successfully. Um, we have a turnaround of um, five working days um, for results. So we're able to get that back um, to you quickly. 
And we also um, provide feedback um, on unsuccessful assessments. Um, so if um, they need um, to reset, you know what areas to, to work on as well. <clears throat> Um, so, in summary, then these are um, the key things to consider um, at the planning stage. So, um, yeah, planning your curriculum around the apprenticeship standard um, and not just continuing delivery as you have done previously um, under the framework, really important. Um, engage early with your endpoint assessment and organisation, ensure you get access to um, any um, guidance and support and that you're clear on what the requirements are. Um, I should also highlight that um, obviously the endpoint assessment organisation needs to be agreed with the employer, um, so that the employer needs to be involved um, in that decision and make the final decision um, as to who the EPA will be. <clears throat> Ensure that you factor in um, time for um, the endpoint assessment in the length of your programme um, and also um, consider, uh, um, and it's not just the practical um, requirements, but the other elements um, that are going to be needed for the EPA um, and plan accordingly. So where will the assessments take place? Um, who um, will be providing the tools, equipment and materials um, that will be needed. Um, and we'll look at this part a little bit more um, once we go into um, um, the EPA section. Um, it's also important that you involve the learner in the standard um, that they'll be assessed against um, and the assessment requirements. So ensure that they've actually had the opportunity um, to um, see and know what um, the details of the standard are, what they've um, been covered and what the assessment elements are um, and how they're actually going to be assessed. And I think um, it's not just the learner, it's also the employer that you should involve um, in this process as well, because then they have the opportunity um, to maximise um, the apprentice's um, ability to um, meet that criteria um, whilst they're in the workplace. And, and that really should be part of their induction. It isn't something that should be introduced um, later on in the programme. <clears throat> um, and then it's also important then to actually practice those assessment methods throughout the programme. Um, it shouldn't be something that they haven't done before when they get to the um, EPA or only do it the mock um, at the end. Um, the assessment methods that are going to be used, um, the more practice that they have throughout, the more confident they're going to be um, when they get to that final endpoint assessment. Um, in particular, with things like the professional discussion, um, we find that yeah, within the construction sector, um, often the apprentices um, may be quite happy sort of, yeah, with the practical side of things, but being able to um, explain and um, meet those sort of knowledge criteria and show their understanding um, of um, the, um, the sort of com companies, the practical side. Um, can be more challenging for them. So the more practice they get in this, the better. So that's the on-programme side. Um, and then we get to gateway. So this is the point where teaching and learning has finished um, and the employer and training provider make a judgment on the competence of the apprentice against the standard. Um, and I have here, so these are the um, key points for your gateway meeting. Um, so first of all, you need to um, agree a set date and time for the meeting um, and ensure those that need to be involved in the meeting um, are able to attend. So you need to have um, both um, the employer, the apprentice and the training provider um, need to be involved um, within that meeting. Now, the employer representative needs to be someone that can actually confirm um, the competence of the apprentice. So someone that's involved in um, what they're doing day to day. So um, possibly, for example, their line manager. 
Do you then need to um, review the knowledge and skills and behaviour of the standard and confirm that that apprentice is competent in all of those areas? Um, and also um, confirm that the apprentice has um, met all of the gateway requirements um, and that they have the evidence um, ready to be submitted to the endpoint assessment organisation. So this includes um, your areas such as your English and math um, qualifications. Um, where required, um, if there's a mandatory qualification, so um, with the carpentry and joinery standards, um, you'll need to have evidence of that um, qualification as well. Um, any evidence that might be required to support the endpoint assessment, so the majority in construction require um, an assessment portfolio to support a professional discussion. Um, um, or there's also um, a research assignment um, in the property maintenance as well. So you need to make sure that you've got those ready um, to be submitted and um, to confirm that that apprentice um, has achieved gateway. Um, discuss the endpoint assessment requirements um, with them. So make sure that they know um, the methods and um, how they're going to be assessed. Also um, ensure that the roles and responsibilities are clear um, around the endpoint assessment um, itself. Um, and for example, the responsibility of the apprentice to turn up um, and the consequences if they don't, because um, you can guarantee that there will be charges um, in relation to a no-show um, by the endpoint assessment organisation. Um, so is that going to be um, the training provider or the employer um, that's um, going to, to pay if that happens? So everyone needs to be clear on the importance of when a date is set um, of the attendance um, for that endpoint assessment. Um, and it's also important that you um, keep a record of the meeting and ensure um, that all parties sign so that you've got a copy for your um, audit purposes as well. So you've had the gateway meeting um, and confirmed the apprentice is, has completed all your programme requirements. So now it's time to book the endpoint assessment. So in terms of the process, um, this obviously can vary depending on the endpoint assessment organisation. So it's really important um, that you get the information um, around the process for bookings from your EPAO. Um, before this point with NOCN, you, as I mentioned, you would have the EPA agreement with us so that your apprentices are in our planned pipeline so we will be expecting you when you come to Gateway. Um, so at, with NOCN, our um, bookings are done through our EPA platform called Rubric. Um, so the first thing you would be doing is going on to um, Rubric in order um, to make your bookings um, to schedule dates um, and upload any Gateway evidence as, we, as required. So um, with our process, from the point of booking, the date scheduled are a minimum of um, one month um, after that date. So that then gives you um, a, an opportunity during that period before the EPA to work with the apprentices to help prepare them for um, the endpoint assessment. So you can do um, further revision and learning with them. Um, but also you'll get access to um, mock assessment materials um, so you can actually carry out mock assessments and if possible um, try and replicate the sort of conditions that they ha will have for the um, live assessments. So have the location the same um, and um, if possible have someone that's um, not familiar, that the apprentice is not familiar with actually carrying out the assessing as well. So then you have um, the main event. So um, it's important to make sure that everyone knows the date and time and where they need to be, and that's communicated to all of those involved. 
um, and that you've organised um, the facilities and the setup if required, and we'll look at the individual assessment components next. Um, that, that's all set up ready um, for that endpoint assessment to take place. So, um, once the endpoint assessment has happened, we don't provide feedback to the apprentice um, on the day of assessment, so they won't know um, whether or not they have achieved. Um, at NOCN, as I mentioned, um, we issue with um, results within five working days um, of the assessment. Um, and if required, um, any resits um, can be then um, scheduled in. And um, once achieved, um, so we request the apprenticeship certificate from um, the ESFA, um, and those certificates go directly to the employer. So that's an overview of the process. So these are um, the key assessment methods, the main assessment methods that tend to be used um, for endpoint assessment in construction standards. So they nearly all have an online, uh, well, we carry them out on, online, a multiple choice test, um, which are then um, invigilated. Um, and they can be invigilated um, by the training provider um, following our guidelines. Um, however, as I mentioned, so during COVID, um, we have been providing um, remote inv invigilation um, of these tests that we have been carrying out. Um, and we've been doing that at um, no extra cost um, during this time. Um, and then um, the second main element has to be um, a workplace observation or um, a practical test. Um, now, in construction, it's not usually um, just a sort of standard observation of the apprentice in the workplace. Um, most commonly, um, it's a task-based practical where there's a set tasks um, provided by the endpoint assessment organisation. Um, and they're done in controlled um, conditions, but that's often not at the employer's site. So um, in, um, that's most often taking place um, at, um, using the college or training providers um, facilities. Um, so also um, with, um, within um, the construction, for the majority of the standards, the, um, for the practical, the assessor can actually assess more than one apprentice at a time. Um, now, again, it's important to look at the guidance and the assessment plan because this can, can vary. Um, with the carpentry and joinery standards, um, it's four. Um, with um, bricklayer, it can be up to six, um, whereas with others, it can be only sort of three or two. Um, but again, so you can access all the information on those ratios for um, you, the use of the facilities and setup. So um, when you contract with us, well, you'll get guidance around the setup and the bays and the facilities as to how um, that assessment location would need to be um, set up. So it's important that you plan early for that. Also, um, we are aware that some organisations ha have actually set up some really great assessment facilities um, that they have um, available that can be used um, by apprentices for other providers. So if that's you um, and you're in that position, we, we are really interested in hearing from you um, because we are looking to um, support those providers um, that, where they don't have the required facilities um, in order for their um, apprentices to be endpoint assessed. Um, so if you've set up yeah, some separate facilities for endpoint assessments that, and you've got um, the availability um, to be able to um, allow those to be used by others, then do let us know. Um, we we won't be it won't be able to assess everybody during half term. <laughs> there were obviously the, you, um, we get a lot of demand for um, your, um, the half terms and for people wanting to be assessed at that time, um, and that's going to be obviously first come first serve. Um, to be able to um, to get that period, um, so. Um, um, you do need to bear that in mind um, with your planning as to um, when your assessments are going to be able um, to take place. 
Um, for the actual detail um, for the specific um, bay setups for the particular task, um, we provide that information at the point of um, the booking the EPA. So that's your minimum of one month before. Um, so that you can then um, get the source, the, the materials and things that are required for the specific task that those apprentices are going to be given in time for the day of the assessment. Um, and then the, the details of the specific task that the apprentice is actually going to um, be asked to do will then be provided to the apprentice on the day. Um, and then the final element is, and um, they've got diff different names for it, oral questions, professional discussion, interview, um, and they have slightly different formats. So again, um, make sure that you do look at the details for the specific standard um, within the assessment plan. Um, most of the time, um, particularly within this standard, they're often underpinned by a portfolio of evidence. So this isn't the same as their um, on-program um, portfolio. We don't want to see everything that they've done um, throughout their program. It's um, more of an assessment portfolio. Um, so it's um, a limited um, portfolio that's a showcase of their best work that they've done um, within their final few months of, of the program. And the apprentice will also need access to this to be able to um, refer to it and use examples um, when answering their questions. So um, for some standards, um, there's specific criteria um, that um, are covered within the professional discussion. Whereas others, it might vary depending on um, what elements have been covered in the practical, um, and then it will co cover um, different areas that weren't covered within that um, practical section. So again, really important that you um, are using the assessment plan um, and know um, how that works. So positive steps to um, ensure success. Um, so in summary, um, and I'm going to say it again, um, ensure that your curriculum um, follows the apprenticeship standard and is not a copy of um, the previous framework. Um, work with your endpoint assessment organisation, ensure that you understand um, the endpoint assessment um, and um, the practicalities and the gateway requirements, get all of the information that you need right from the beginning. Um, engage with your um, apprentices and learners, ensure that they also um, are familiar with the standard and the assessment plan. GDPR, right, we haven't covered this one yet. So this is um, another area to be really careful on um, within endpoint assessment or um, when they're carrying out endpoint assessments. So apprentices um, will fail if they break the regulations around GDPR. If they're submitting a portfolio, um, make sure that you check them um, and ensure that there aren't any um, sort of specific um, information that's provided within there, such as um, individuals' names, um, names of clients and companies, um, and also ensure that the um, apprentice is um, um, familiar with um, when they're carrying out their um, professional discussions that they're used to ensuring that they're not um, saying people's names um, and providing individual client names. Because if they do that, then they're going to fail um, the EPA. So really important. Um, and also, the, finally, we've also um, covered um, ensuring that you've got sufficient time to prepare for the endpoint assessment at the end of the programme. Really, please just don't just rush them through. Um, we don't want you know, um, those that have sort of delivered a framework and then um, put them through to the, the EPA to, to just see what happens. Um, ensure that um, they've practiced throughout, they understand what they're being assessed against, um, and then you've got um, much more likelihood of having a positive outcome for the endpoint assessment. <clears throat> So after that, then um, we're going to be issuing um, results. 
Um, so we're quite flexible with the endpoint assessment and um, the particular individual elements. So um, whether individual elements have been taken um, separately or um, assessments have all been done on the same day, um, you'll get um, result confirmations either for individual statements or um, you've taken multiple components, it'll be a combined statement confirming the um, overall achievement. If all the elements get achieved, um, then we request the um, apprenticeship certificate um, on your behalf. Um, and th uh, those um, certificates are um, issued by ESFA and are sent directly to the employer. So if there are elements that have been failed, um, as I mentioned, we do provide um, feedback um, in order to support for um, a resit. So they can resit individual elements um, and you need to consider and have um, the discussion as to who pays for the resit. Is that going to be the training provider or the employer? So what has been agreed um, around resits? Um, there's also um, the difference between um, a resit and a retake. So a retake is where um, further learning is required before the apprentice can retake the EPA. Um, and that normally in that instance, you would expect that they may um, have um, um, found more than one um, component um, and will be um, sort of retaking the, the sort of full EPA um, process as well. <clears throat> So um, that's kind of yeah, um, a brief overview then of um, the endpoint assessment and the process um, and things to think about when um, we're planning in order to get to a successful outcome. Um, so we have got time now um, if there are any questions. Um, as Catherine mentioned, I think there, um, you should, I think it's normally in the bottom right hand side. There's a little chat box um, if you want to type in um, any questions in there. Um, we can, um, we'll have a look at sort of, um, any that are more general. If you've got anything specific for you as a training provider, um, we can always come back to more specific questions um, later. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you.